Today I am travelling to the highest village in the Scottish Highlands. Situated at an elevation of 345 metres above sea level and home to around 716 people, Tom and Tool is the highest village in the Highlands and is located within the beautiful Cairngorms National Park. Nearby to one of Scotland's best ski resorts and the world's most densely populated whisky region, Join me as I explore this beautiful part of Scotland and make my way to the Highlands' highest village. I'm beginning my journey to the Highlands' highest village here at the Highlanders Bakehouse. Apparently they sell butteries in here, which are a speciality from this area. Let's go in and try. Butteries, which are also called Aberdeen Rolls, originate from northeast Scotland and are not so common to see in other parts of Scotland. I ordered the butteries and received two with butter and jam. The interior and people working there are so lovely and they even gave me a hot water bottle. The girl working in there described them as a flat croissant. They were a little bit salty compared to a normal croissant but with the jam and the butter, so good and the coffee is so good. So if you're in this area, you must visit and I got one of the mega chocolate brownies to take away so I'll have this later on. Now time to drive to the Highlands Highest Village. I started my drive towards the Highlands Highest Village. I passed the parking area for Balmoral Castle, the summer home for the royal family. This area is called Royal Deeside and it's so beautiful, especially during the autumn season. The road turned single track with lots of passing spaces and as I started to gain some elevation, the hills came into view. After driving just a few minutes, I've come across a point where you can start to see the snow on the hills over there and it's really cold. The hills look so beautiful with the snow. I saw a sign on the road for Corgaff Castle. So I came in to have a look. It's only open in the summer and the admission is seven pounds 50. It looks more of a modern castle than some of the ruined castles that I've went to in previous videos. I wonder what it's like inside. Built in the mid 1500s, Corgaff Castle has had an interesting history. It was originally a home, then it became derelict, then it was set on fire, then it was used as an army barracks and a legal whiskey distillery. It's now operated by Historic Scotland. I just checked the weather. It's one o'clock at the moment and it's three degrees Celsius. Later on, it's due to be minus two overnight. So winter is here. Let's keep driving. The road is so steep. I've just come across these barriers. Maybe when the road is too snowy, they close the road so you can't drive. I haven't heard of anyone getting winter tires in Scotland before. It's not really something we do here. I know that other countries, my friend in Switzerland often and changes her tires and also in Japan I know it's really common maybe in the highlands of Scotland people do that if you live in the highlands and you do change your tires please comment and let us know when I went to Scotland's highest village which is one lockhead it's so it's higher than this one the roads weren't as steep to get, get up there. They were hilly, but they weren't steep. I didn't have to drive in first or second gear. There's another stop here at the side of the road and they look really interesting. I wonder what it is. I saw a sign as well saying ski center. So we must be close to the ski slopes. Oh, there are chairs, look. There's four of them. Very interesting. So you can sit inside. Oh, there's an echo in here. Wow, the view's amazing here. There's the castle over in the distance there. I was just driving along and I think I saw a golden eagle. It just swooped in front of the van. It feels so wintry up here. There's more and more snow the higher I get. Ah, there's so much snow. Oh, it's so lovely. It is so cold. In Scotland, there are a few ski resorts and I went skiing when I was about 10 or 11 years old, I went on a group trip with a youth club. There's a big sign here saying, welcome to the Cairngorms Dark Sky Park. So it's a bit like the Galloway Forest Park. It's also a dark sky park. There's the sign for the Licht Ski Centre. I'd love to come back here sometime and try the skiing. Oh, it's so cold. I can hardly hold the camera. I need to put my gloves back on. 
The Lecht Ski Resort is one of five ski resorts in Scotland. The Lecht is located within the Cairngorms National Park at an elevation of 2,090 feet or 637 metres. It's been operating since the 1970s and has around 20 ski runs and 14 lifts. There are a variety of runs to suit all levels of experience, from complete beginner to advanced. Scotland is just amazing in all seasons. I know winter is a bit dark, but when you do have the daylight, it is really beautiful. Wow. We must almost be near the highest village in the Highlands now. Hopefully it's not much further. As I was driving along, I saw a signpost for a walk to a place called the Lecht Mine. So I stopped, it's just a half a mile walk and I can actually see it. It doesn't look that far away. So I'm going to walk out there and see what it is. At the beginning of the walk, it mentioned that this path here that I'm on now was used for smuggling whiskey back in the day. So a few videos ago, I made a video about the whiskey region of Speyside and there was a lot of illegal whiskey distilling back in the day. This was one of the paths that they used to smuggle the whiskey out of the glen. Oh, it is bitterly cold. Wow. Yeah, I think it must be probably about zero degrees now. Really, really cold. Every time I take off my gloves, my fingertips become frozen. Let's go inside. Ooh. Wow, it's almost like a castle, a more modern castle in a way. Wow, it's beautiful. The Lecht Mine is a former iron mining site and was active from 1730 to 1737 for iron and from 1841 to 1846 for manganese. During its peak, over 60 individuals were employed at the mine and the site was restored in 1983. Recently, I'm having some issues with this van door. It's extremely stiff, very, very hard to close. Oh. I already asked the garage if he's gonna help me. Tom and Tool, home to approximately 716 people and situated at an elevation of 345 metres, is the highest village in the Scottish Highlands. Looks like we're arriving in the Highlands' highest village. Tom and Tool Village was developed in part to control cattle raiding and whisky smuggling in the area, both of which were a way of life for many years. Whiskey is still important to the local economy to this day, and Tom and Tool sits in the Speyside Whiskey region, and the Tom and Tool distillery is nearby. Located on the edge of the Cairngorms National Park, the village is a great place to base yourself for outdoor activities, such as walking, horse riding, fishing, and snow sports, especially with the Lech Ski Centre being only seven miles away. Tom and Tool is the closest village to the Lech and is a popular place with skiers and snowboarders throughout the winter months. The village is home to a few hotels, a village shop, the old fire station tea room, and a brilliant whiskey shop called the Whiskey Castle. Here's the bathroom at the campsite here. There's a tap outside, but it's turned off in the winter, so it's possible to use this tap here if you need any drinking water. So I made it to the highest village in the Highlands. I'm going to go to the village shop and pay because I don't have any cash for the honesty box. I just paid at the village shop. It was 15 pounds for the electric hookup and the van. And if you don't have electric hookup, it's 12 pounds to stay the night. So I'm going to head into the Whiskey Castle. I read on Google reviews that they have a great selection of whiskey. Whenever I attached the electric hookup to my van, I also set up my Starlink internet. I made sure to turn on my new heater too. So the temperature outside is now two degrees Celsius. When I was out and about, I bought the Tom and Tool whiskey. So this is the Speyside whiskey. This is the distillery that's nearby the highest village in the Highlands. So I'll try a bit of that later on. This is the brownie I got earlier. Look at that. It's, oh absolutely massive. I've had the heater on in the van for about an hour now and it's so toasty and so cozy and because I'm able to plug in I've also got my little small radiator up, um, plugged in but I just turned it off because it was getting quite hot inside the van. Now it's 
zero degrees and I can see that at 4 and 5 a.m. it's due to snow which is so exciting if tomorrow I wake up and it's snowing. The next three days all have snow forecasts so this might be the first snow in the village which is amazing. When I was in the shop I was asking the lady if they ever close the barriers and people are stuck inside the village and trapped in the village but she said there's actually four roads into the village so even if one of the roads is closed they can access it in different ways so that's good. I already ate the chocolate brownie it was so good I was planning to have half today and half tomorrow but it was really good and actually that was all I had for my for my dinner. Actually today all I had to eat was the butteries, the flat white and the chocolate brownie. That's absolutely terrible. I don't usually eat like that every day. But just when I'm traveling around, it was fun to try them. So this whiskey, I will save it and enjoy. Oh, so this is the, the whiskey that I bought. I might try a little tiny sip. We'll use the Ardbeg glass today. Ooh, smells good. I actually don't really like drinking on my own. I much prefer enjoying these with other people. So I like to have all these little small bottles in the van. And then when I'm in the van with friends or I catch up with people when I'm traveling, I enjoy drinking them. Very nice. I've really enjoyed learning about whiskey. I had such a great interest in wine, also Japanese sake. When I lived in Australia, I actually made it my goal to visit every major wine region in Australia, which I managed to complete within two years. And then when I was in Japan, I traveled all around the country in a camper van and visited many of the Japanese sake distilleries. I absolutely love Japanese sake, but I'm really, really enjoying learning about whiskey and I've really become quite a big fan of it. And it's nice to try the different ones and figure out which ones I like. I think the Isla whiskies are still my favourite. I really like the PT flavour of the whisky. I really like these too but I think, I think the PT ones win. I'm going to do a little bit of work on my laptop before I go to bed. I've just made my bed and it's so warm inside the van. The new diesel heater has been amazing. I've just turned it off before I go to sleep, but I'll keep the small oil heated radiator on overnight. This video was possible to film today thanks to Manta Sleep. Manta Sleep make the most amazing sleep eye masks and this has been so helpful for the van because sometimes moonlight and street lights shine through the windows and make it difficult for me to sleep inside the van. The eye masks are so comfortable and they're 100% blackout. There's no pressure and also the these eye cups here are adjustable so you can move them to the position that's most comfortable for your eyes. The previous sleep mask I used was one that I got free from an airline and the strap was really tight on my head and the great thing about the Manta sleep mask is that it has a velcro strap so you can adjust it quite easily to the size of your head as well. The sleep mask comes with a small storage bag and also some earplugs which is really handy for when I'm traveling. If you're like me and love a night of undisturbed sleep, Manta are offering 10% off if you use the code Ruth at checkout. I'll leave the link below. Now time for bed. I had a wonderful night of sleep in my cosy van, even though the temperatures outside were freezing. Adding the diesel heater and getting a small radiator were great decisions, and it makes the van very usable during the winter months. Before leaving, I took another walk around Tom and Tool and paid a visit to the Bird Hide. Just outside the village, there is this dark sky viewing area. So there's a hut over here where you can see the dark sky and also birds. Looks like you can see amazing stars here. In the field, there's a bathtub and it's all frozen. Oh my goodness. There's more bathtubs over on this side as well. I wonder what these are for. Are these drinking troughs for the animals perhaps? So there's the bird hide just over there. There's even some binoculars there. It's kind of like the, the viewing area at the deer place I went to. So nice in here out of the wind. There's some of the birds that you can see, the red shank, oyster catcher, and a snipe. I also came across the museum, 
which wasn't open, and more information about the town. It was interesting to find out that Tom and Tool was laid out in 1776, and it was a planned settlement. There was even a drawing showing the original plan for the village. I've had an amazing time exploring the highest village in the Scottish Highlands and the surrounding areas. The Cairngorms National Park has so much to offer and I hope this video inspires you to visit this beautiful part of Scotland. See you next time!